To be honest, I was not familiar at all with LTI prior to the project. Well, prior to the project, I thought that LTI were the people that managed the Moodle system and did lecture capture in, for lectures and seminars and classes. That changed a lot when I actually got involved and worked with LTI during the course of this project and saw the wide range of skills and abilities they're able to bring to uh, a non-strictly speaking teaching project. LTI, I didn't know anything about it. When it arrived in this project, I realised that it greatly exceeded my expectations so far as what it could deliver in this arena. Uh, LTI is the group of people who work with academics, work with departments and institutes to take forward innovative and engaging ideas for changing and supporting student engagement and teaching and learning in the school. So we, we bring experience in a wide range of areas. Um, we're not just knowledgeable in terms of uh, online platforms or in terms of online learning. Some uh, members of the team know a lot about instructional design, about how to design a proper engagement strategy to get users on board. People who understand teaching and learning and how that can be improved through the use of technology. We are first and foremost, because of the very nature of the work that we do, uh, enthusiastic problem solvers. Most importantly, we bring um, a huge amount of enthusiasm for um, projects such as Constitution UK. I think for me the most important thing the IPA brought to the project was a sense of openness to ideas. So going into the IPA the very first time we, we were talking about this, we didn't go in to talk about Constitution UK, we went in to talk about some of our ideas around innovative online learning. At the beginning of the project we sat down with members of the IPA and essentially brainstormed the shape of the project. There was a really creative atmosphere in the room as we were bouncing ideas off each other. There was a lot of yes and we could do this. The collaboration between the IPA and LTI on the Constitution UK project was a really, really effective one. From the LTI side, what we had was both a technical understanding of the platforms and the technology available, but also we had an understanding of the incentives that made people respond to online platforms and online participation, and they had that expertise in droves. Clearly our direction and focus was, was pedagogical and technological, but we threw ourselves into marketing, we threw ourselves into social media relationship building, we were part of the broader team. We got involved in some of the discipline debates. That kind of uh, ability to be openly collaborative was critical to it actually working. We have our IPA team and we have our LTI team and I'm picking up what's going on. I'm wheeled into a studio or wheeled into a meeting. So I'm not a hands-on guy. But what I see is energy, enthusiasm, partnership and the product really reflects the close working relationship between the two. Learning can take place in so many different ways. The model is based on understanding that there's a huge range of different people that may participate for all kinds of different reasons. This project was about the co-creation of knowledge, so using academic expertise alongside the uh, insights, the prejudices, the fears, the ideas of ordinary people and bringing those two sources together to create knowledge in a new and exciting way. We can uh, anticipate the composition of the community that we get, uh, the levels of educational uh, attainment, the familiarity with constitutional law or convention as a subject area. Uh, we had to start from a position of no assumed knowledge. How can we reach a critical number of users, but even more importantly, how can we keep these users engaged? The LTI team understood the idea of gamification, which wasn't something I was familiar with before the project. They understood that by using a point structure and rewarding members of the public with different amounts of points for different types of intervention, you could really increase the competition between users and participants in the platform. And that gave people a real incentive to participate in a meaningful way with the project. We brought in these LSE people who were facilitators of the community because we didn't want to leave the community as it were floundering on its own. The facilitators were a critical element of making sure that the project was a success, making sure that the online community felt that they were being listened to and responded to, but also that their questions and concerns were being answered and addressed. In order for people to understand or to be able to articulate in a way that we can listen to, in a way that we can uh, empathise with, which I think we should be doing, we have to guide them in a way that they know the implications of their own argument. In terms of the contributions I try and make, I, I want people to ask questions that they wouldn't normally ask. I think that's kind of what it's yeah. all about. We reached a significant number of people and those we did reach were very 
actively involved. For them, this was a unique opportunity to express their opinions and to have their voices heard in a way that they may not have had if the project didn't exist. Well, I remember one event in particular in this studio. We were broadcasting live down the web and we were getting tweeted questions live. And the questions were running across the screen and we were answering them. And these people might have been in Reykjavik, they might have been in Nairobi, they might have been in a new academic building here in LSE. And I thought, this is incredible. The potentiality here to bring directly to people who cannot access LSE in a traditional manner, the opportunity not just to listen, but to engage, is something which I couldn't have anticipated and which I now see to be real as a result of this project and exciting. It was amazing how many people were really energised by the idea of contributing to writing a constitution for the United Kingdom. There are large segments of the population that want civic engagement. Something they can do from the comfort of their own homes to participate in a wider, more meaningful, more intellectual discussion. There's a huge potential that I see for the joint creation of knowledge. Um, we're often talking about sharing practice, sharing our research results. A similar project could also serve just the academic community in really changing the way we think about research and making it a less individualized and a more communal collaborative experience. So we were successful in building uh, an active and engaged community of some 1500 users who over 14 weeks contributed 10,000 discussion comments, uh, who cast some 25,000 votes, generated more than a million words in contributions, and at the end of the project, we were left with a refined, debated, final written constitution of some 8,500 words. Constitutionalism is something where academia and professors of law and barristers will debate for hours. It's not, a, not an area where you would think it's immediately accessible to the general public. So the greatest challenge was trying to convince people firstly to participate and they had something meaningful to say, but also then to continue that engagement over an extended period of months and develop their ideas through engagement and discussion with people they were never going to meet except on this online platform. It was a wild project, but it was one that was absolutely magnificently achieved.